where is there room for the most improvement? So if I'm a founder right now, what should I be working on? I would say uh, for us in Boston was uh, integrated systems uh, and um, high volume, fast information, putting it in the hands of leadership. You know, we, we have limited resources in police departments. So you want to put your resources where they're going to have the biggest impact. So the, the best and quickest information you have uh, you're going to make better decisions. And, and secondly, in the hands of the guys out in the field, because evolving incidents, you might have a home invasion and you got a, the house around it, and you want good real-time information on, on the premise, on the people that are involved, the, the victim, like as much information as you can get. So I think, I think integration and fast-moving uh, de delivery is, is what I'd be looking for. Um, if, if there were another founder looking to get into public safety and, and, and police technology, I would, I would take them back to where we were six years ago, and we wanted to build, again, you know, cool domain awareness systems and analytical stuff and kind of the business intelligence that seems very alluring, seems very flashy, but the advice that I would give them today and I would have given them six years ago would be, um, I guess I say this with half a smile, is there's a lot of boring problems out there and it just so happens that the boring problems are typically the things that nobody else wants to work on, nobody else uh, you know, finds interest in, but there's the most opportunity there. And uh, I think, you know, they, again, they may seem you know, mundane or not, may jump off the page, but those are the things that police departments, government entities, whatever, struggle with day in and day out. And you know, they're, they're in these applications for eight or nine hours of their, of their shift. So you know, go, go find the thing that most people don't want to work on and doesn't seem that alluring, and that's probably the, the biggest problem that needs solving. Um, other than officer wellness, which I think is just a big place, because I think if you don't have a healthy officer, you're not going to have a healthy department, and you're not going to have a healthy relationship with the community. I'd also add in tools that allow that input and sort of the, the two-way communication with the community. The, the, we should be policing as a part of the community, not apart from the community, as my chief always says. Um, but that means, like, they need, to, they need an easy way to tell me how we're doing um, and what their concerns are and what their priorities are. And right now, there, there aren't a whole lot of options for that that are cost-effective. There are a lot of sort of things that are out there that some of those super large departments can afford, but us middle-of-the-road folks, it's, it's a big... <laughs> it's yeah. a big a lift. And Chris, to follow up on that, when you say um, officer wellness, what do you guys do today to determine that? Right now, we're st I'd say we're still in sort of the bronze age. Just like interactions age. with... It's the, yeah, your supervisor. We have what we call the EIS, the early warning system, really. The, and, um, but it's very much... Um, it's not predicting, and I don't like using the word, but it's not looking into the future. It's counting how many bad things have happened and if past. you've passed the threshold. We need, like, how is this person doing? Um, if it's, there needs to be active technology that this person, this is their second suicide call this week or whatever, oh, or this day. They, they shouldn't be going to this noise complaint house party because they're probably a little on edge. And so the system needs to flag to the dispatcher get somebody else. That's really Send this person on a paper call, not on like that active call. <laughs> That's really interesting.